right, so I want to talk about the uh, Bitcoin halving again. And I got a question from the last video um, asking about the bitwise shift function. And the question was, you know, why can't we just divide the initial block subsidy by two raised to the power of the number of past halvings instead of using the bitwise shift operation? And so I, you know, I, I was kind of, you know, this is an interesting question because it is, you know, a, a, it's an interesting piece of code, right? It's kind of like, it's strange why, um, why we would choose to use the bitwise function um, instead of something that's maybe a little bit easier to, you know, comprehend, like just dividing by two raised to the power of the halvings, right? And ultimately, um, you know, the, both methods yield very similar results, um, but there are some key differences. So first of all, just from a computer science perspective, um, you know, doing a bitwise shift operation is cleaner, right? It's literally just um, one parameter, the bitwise shift, and then another parameter. Whereas um, doing this type of uh, calculation it requires a few more things, right? It requires a division um, operation. It, it, it requires a power operation. Um, and then it also would require a, um, a rounding down operation, right? Because this number won't necessarily always give you an integer unless you specifically ask for one. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's just another thing. I think in general, doing it this way is actually just cleaner, easier, and more efficient. And so that's probably the reason why um, it was chosen to do it that way, right? Um, but the other thing I noticed, you know, I mean, in, in writing everything out, um, there's a couple of other interesting things that I noticed. Um, so first of all, just to kind of orient ourselves, uh, th so this is the bitwise shift operation, right? We start with the initial block subsidy written on binary form. Okay, so this is 5 billion written in binary, this first line up here. Um, and every time we do this bitwise shift operation, you know, iterating the halvings number up by one, what we're doing is we're removing one of the digits from this binary number, one of the digits on the right side from this binary number, right? So when halvings is zero, it's the whole binary number. When halvings is one, then we remove one of those zeros on the right. When it's two, we remove two of the zeros on the right, right, and so on and so forth until we've removed all the digits from the right side, right? So you can see how we're removing, you know, one digit from the right with each of the halvings, and we get all the way down to the point where we've only got one digit left, and it's just the one. You know, and then when we have that, no more digits left. So that's where the block subsidy goes to zero and it stays there, you know, permanently after the 33rd halving. All right. Um, but something interesting happens at the 10th halving. Okay. At the 10th halving, this is where for the first time you remove a one from this binary number. Okay. And because you're removing a one, you're not getting a perfectly even halving of the subsidy, right? Every time before that, when you removed a zero, you got a perfect 50% halving. But now that we're removing a one, we actually get this effect where it kind of looks like we're rounding down, right? So if we, if we weren't doing any sort of rounding and we were just taking the full you know, divide by two operation, we would get uh, this number here, this number of sats, right? And it'd be, um, it'd have a, a decimal of sats, which obviously that's not possible in Bitcoin, right? We, all the Satoshi denominations are whole numbers. There can't be any decimals. And so, you know, Bitcoin's code has to have a way of producing integer number of Satoshis. And so by using this bitwise shift operation, we're always ensuring that the block subsidy that we're putting 
or that we're calculating is an integer. But as a result, you know, in this case, um, we round down. Okay, so we actually, you know, you can see here, just look at the last two numbers from 25 to 12, right? And then this is what it would have been if we hadn't done any rounding at all. So 12.5. So we round down. And because we're rounding down, this having actually is a reduction of slightly more than half, right? It's a reduction of more than 50%. So that's the first time that that happens. Then we get a couple more zeros, right? And then we get this series of ones. We have five ones in this binary number, um, kind of in this spot here. And now with each halving, again, we have these reductions that are slightly larger than 50%. So they're, they're actually, you know, they're not perfect halvings. They're, um, they're slightly larger than 50%. And again, you know, like uh, you can see what this happens when, um, this actually happens when the leftover digits are greater than 0.5 right? 0.5 or greater, I should say, because it happens here at 0.5. Then it also happens at this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, when the digits, the significant figures at the, at, at the end of this number are greater than 0.5, okay? And then it doesn't happen here because it's less than, and then it happens again here because it's greater than. So you can see it kind of just, it has that pattern. And then again, here it's greater than, so it happens. And then here, um, and then here, and then, you know, in, for the last one as well, right? In the last case. Um, I think these last couple halvings here are, are the most interesting just because, you know, now we're starting to get a halving that's fairly substantially more than 50%. So in this case, you know, minus 55.55555%, which is interesting. <laughs> we're going from nine to four um, on the 30th halving. And then the last one, of course, right? When we go from one set to zero, that's a 100% reduction in subsidy. So that's that's actually, you know, it, it's not even having at all. It's just, it goes completely 100% down, right? So I don't know, I thought that was kind of an interesting little, you know, probably never thought of it like that, but you know, the last having actually reduces it by 100%. So that's interesting. Um, so kind of, you know, to, to the last couple of points I just want to touch on here. So um, there are 11 of these halvings where the subsidy is reduced by more than 50%, right? So these 11. And uh, this happens when the bitwise shift um, occurs on a one, right, in the binary number. And as a result of rounding down um, the subsidy, the total amount of Bitcoin mined will actually never exceed 20,999,999.9 and what that um what that means is when all is said and done we will never have more than 21 million bitcoin minus 2.31 million sats okay so you know there you go like that you know it's just like some of these these weird quirks of bitcoin right like the, these little weird mathematical quirks that you start to realize when you dive into the code and, and kind of see how things actually work, you know, a little bit more fundamentally. Um, I, you know, I think these things are fascinating. So anyway, so I'd share that with you. Um, hope you kind of enjoyed <laughs> seeing that laid out. Um, and yeah, if you have any other questions or any other comments, right. If you, if you thought any of this was interesting or, um, or if I missed any, any patterns or any, any interesting things that you see, uh, please let me know. Thanks for watching.